In this video, I'm gonna teach you the language of MetaZoo. I'm gonna go over the general rules and go over aura types and page types. What is up guys, it's Drip Drop bringing you the drippest drop I can find. I hope you guys are doing well and I want you guys to know that you are loved. Welcome to my first video in the new how to play MetaZoo series I'm gonna be putting on. As you saw in the very beginning, I'm gonna go over the language of MetaZoo, I'm gonna go over the general rules of the game and I'm gonna go over the different aura types and page types that you're gonna find in MetaZoo so far. I hope you guys get a lot of value and enjoyment out of this video as I have been putting in a lot of work in it. So let's go ahead and dive straight into the language of MetaZoo. Also guys, if you find yourself enjoying this content and you want to see more of it, don't forget to punch the like button, slap the subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything and always remember to stay thankful. The arena. So the arena is pretty much the area in which you play the cards. So whether it be an aura, an artifact, a spell, or a beastie, Basically, the area in which you play is going to be called the arena. Then you have the aura. The aura is what gives you the ability to play other cards. It's going to be the resources to play the cost of the cards that you are using. Next up, we have the battleground. So you know we ha how we had the arena in which you played the cards? The battleground is going to be the entirety of the playmat that we have. So you have the arena here, and then you have some side decks. Your deck, we'll go over the lingo for that. Then we have our afterlife, our limbo, and our cemetery. All of that combined is going to be the battleground, what we call the battleground of the game. Which brings us to who's battling? Who's battling in this game? Well, that's going to be the caster. You, me, we're going to be the casters. All right, so in MetaZoo, instead of player or trainer, like in Pokemon, we are now known as the casters. And then from there, kind of my favorite lingo of this is going to be uh, what you call your deck, what you call your hand, and what you call either drawing or your just individual cards. So I'm gonna go with it in steps from biggest to smallest, okay? So your deck is gonna be called your spell book. From your spell book, you are going to bookmark a page, which is gonna go into your chapter. Okay, so each individual card is going to be known as a page and your hand is going to be known as your chapter. I think that's pretty cool. It's a, it's unique for sure. Depending on which card you play, there's going to be a few key words that you're going to pay attention to. With your pages, instead of just saying I'm playing this, what it's known is as contracting. So if you have the available aura or resources, then you'll be able to contract a page. Depending on what the card says, and we'll go over that here in a little bit, you'll be able to do a certain amount of things, or it might just be a straight contract. Different things may happen whenever you contract a page. So if it says contract and there is some writing to the right of that, go ahead and follow what that contract text says. For one, whenever you contract a page, most of the time, unless if they have a certain trait, which we'll go over later in this video, it will come out fatigued. So fatigued means that you put the card out in a 90 degree angle or laying horizontally. And then from there you have awakened, which will have the card right side up, which will be vertically. And then from there we have similar things like flipped arena and destroyed. So depending on the situation, if it's a trap card and you flipped it, it'll tell you what it can do immediately as it was flipped. Same thing with arena. Depending on what the arena does, it's going to be in effect most, if not all of the time. Depending on what the text says, then you're going to be able to use the arena for the entire arena. It's pretty cool. And then if a card is destroyed, depending on if it says destroyed and it has some text to the right, when it is destroyed, whatever the text says is what you will do. All right, so now we're going to go over the overarching rules for the video the video game. For the card game itself, rule number one, pages must remain where they were played. Unless if a specific card says you can move a card, as soon as you play it, you have to leave it in that spot for the entirety of the game until it leaves the arena. Then from there, I mentioned it earlier, every card is going to come out into the arena fatigued, unless otherwise said on the card itself. The only things that can come out awakened is going to be your aura pages and terror pages. Rule number three, whenever you use a page to either attack, defend, use a power, or generate an aura, you must fatigue that. In the same ruling, what you want to do is, whenever it's fatigued, it cannot be fatigued again, unless if it's been awakened again. Rule number four is going to be aura pages can generate aura even when it is not your turn. If you have a card that you can use on your opponent's turn and it, you need to use aura, you are allowed to do so. Rule number five, it does not cost any aura to attack, defend, or use a power, but you must fatigue the page. Rule number six, and it's a pretty obvious number six, 
Basically, if your life points or a page's life points goes to zero, then it's destroyed. Zilch. Nada. Rule number seven. If a beastie or an artifact is destroyed, unless otherwise stated, it's going to go into limbo. I'm a big fan of rule number eight. Basically, if you go into your spell book to search for a specific card using another page, then you're gonna be able to search that deck or search that spell book, but you don't have to pull anything out. You can just basically take a look at your deck, reshuffle, and hopefully you get some good luck and get that card that you need. When a spell or potion is used and contracted out into the arena, whenever you're done with it, it goes immediately to the cemetery. Rule number 10, all pages and effects are used in a specific order. So basically in which way you played those specific cards, you will have to go in that order. So if you played a spell page and then you played another card, you would have to play the spell page first before you played the other page. And rule 10 part two, if a caster has multiple effects across the board in effect, then the caster gets to choose in which order those effects are used. And that one's gonna be, a, that rule is gonna be a little bit trickier just because it involves a resolution chain. So resolution chain is gonna be in another video I plan on making soon, and it's gonna be a little bit more complicated than just the entirety of rule 10. On rule number 11, you are allowed to use a Terra page at zero for a cost, and all of the Terra pages can be used for any of the Terra bonuses that any of the cards may get. Rule number 12, any damage that is dealt to the casters or pages should remain in between turns. Rule number 13, if any of the aura that was generated previously, it was unused, it is going to disappear as soon as the turn is ending. And on rule number 14, if a caster has zero pages in hand, basically, you guys continue playing until that caster is incapable of playing or life points go to zero. That's pretty much it for the overarching rules of the game. And then next we're gonna go over the page types. So the first type is gonna be the aura type. I went over that earlier in the video. You can have any number of basic auras in your spell book, but special aura pages have their own limit in the spell book just because special aura pages can be a little bit OP relative to their inferior counterparts, which is gonna be the basic aura page. With the aura pages, you're gonna be able to contract beasties, artifacts, spells, and potions. Beasties are your friends. They're gonna be able to attack the opposing caster. They're gonna be able to attack the other beasties on the other side of the field or the arena. They're gonna be your main sources of winning the game. They're gonna be your winning conditions. So make sure you protect your beasties. Then you have your spells. Basically when you contract to use a spell, it is immediately resolved and it goes into the cemetery. Then you have potion types. When you use these, these are gonna be zero to contract. But basically, they have the same similar effects as spells where you immediately use them and then throw them into the cemetery as well. Then you have artifact pages. These are really cool pages. You can use these to power up certain beasties. You can use them to generate more aura. You can use them to do all sorts of things. These are going to be some of your coolest cards that's going to help you win the game. Artifacts actually have LP, so they can be attacked, and that's not really too good for us. So there are some cards that can protect it. You want to be able to use artifacts early and get ahead up on the competition. Another cool thing about artifacts is they can have traits, abilities, and powers that you can use. Then lastly, we have Terra Pages. Terra Pages are used to take up the lack thereof of some certain fourth wall effects. So a lot of Terra Pages can be the desert, can be meteor shower, can be mountains, what have you. Basically, what the Terra Pages do is help with those fourth wall effects. They can power up your artifacts, they can power up your beasties, both attack and defense wise, and they're just overall a beautiful page. When a Terra is destroyed, it will go straight to the afterlife, unfortunately. Right now, we currently have 11 different aura types. These aura types are gonna be the different types of beasties or artifacts or spells that you can use. We have Cosmic, Dark, Earth, Flame, Forest, Frost, Light, Lightning, Neutral, Spirit, and Water. With these elements combined, <laughs> each aura type is pretty unique. Each of them have their ups and downs and different play styles. First off, we have the Cosmic Aura Type. Cosmic Aura Type benefits from having no weakness. It also relies heavily on using effects for strategy. It uses a travel top style as pages become stronger when paired with more pages. Also, Cosmic is pretty cool because it involves aliens and aliens are pretty cool then you have dark type it's aggressive and powerful and grows stronger still when utilizing the knight this deck has the ability to take other pages out quickly and resurrect other pages from limbo this deck can take control if not taken care of quickly then we head on to the earth top it's going to be a pretty tanky deck 
It relies heavily on being strong and beefy, but the cost of being weak in attack power. Use Earth type if you like to take a beating while beating up your opponent. Then we have the Flame type. It's going to be extremely quick and aggressive. It damages both you, the caster, and the opposing caster. The aura costs are relatively low, but it has a high damage output. The Flame type wants to win quickly. Then we have Forest. The Forest relies heavily on beasties. These beasties can be used as trap cards, they can be used as poison control, and it controls the game's tempo. It also likes to rely on high numbers of beasties present. Then we have the Frost deck. The Frost deck is going to be a little bit different. The Frost deck, or the Frost type, loves to take control of the tempo of the game by freezing their opponent and eluding their enemy. So basically it gives you time to formulate a master plan to be able to take out your opponent. Next up we have the Light deck. The Light deck personally is my favorite way to go. Light has the ability to heal HP and works well with all of the synergy it has with all of its artifacts and beasties. Personally, there have been multiple scenarios where I've been able to swing the game in my favor with its strong spells, artifacts, and combos with the beasties. Next up we have a Lightning type. This type is quick and fast, much like Lightning itself. With this in mind, the Lightning takes advantage of traits such as Fleet and First Strike. On top of that, if you can get aura generating pages out early, you're probably going to be in a good spot and going to have a great setup for the remainder of the game. Then you have your neutral pages. I think they're pretty cool because they're usually the cards you'll be using to fill the gaps in your deck or your spell book. Uh, the neutral cards can be played with any aura type and they are also the backbone to many spell books. Then we have the spirit types. Spirit types can be hard to handle with all the traits they possess, aiding them by eluding opponents' attacks. Spirit types have the potential to be strong on their own. Then lastly, we have Water, one of the most versatile types that contain powerful spells and beasties. Together, they pair perfectly in being able to always have a way to stay in the game. With Water, you really can't go wrong. It's a really strong type right now, and I'd probably take advantage of it. Remember guys, this is part one of the How to Play Metazoot series. I hope you guys enjoyed this video thus far, and I hope you guys look forward to the videos that will be coming up in the future. So remember to stay tuned for the rest of the series.